Oh yes, my street dog family, it's that time when I must bid you a very pleasant night wherever you are in St. Kitts and Nevis and wherever you are in the entire Caribbean region or as a matter of fact, wherever you are in the world and welcome you to this Independence Edition of our Street Talk and to wish you, my fellow citizens and residents, a happy 40th uh, independence and trust that we will grow from strength to strength as we thank God for bringing us thus far over the years. So my Street Dog family in the entire Caribbean region, to my Street Dog family throughout the Kittishan and Nibijan diaspora, I say greetings to all who are logged on to Straight Talk, Straight Talk with Ian Patches Lybert on my uh, YouTube and Facebook pages. And I want to thank you for sharing the link and continue to share the link, my Straight Talk family, because there are lots of suppressors out there and we have to counter them with our, our togetherness, my Straight Talk family. And for those of you who may have joined me for the first time, I am thankful for that. But I always have first time listeners. I have first time uh, members who join the family. And I want to welcome you. And just to inform you that Straight Talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues, on Straight Talk, you do have a forum to express yourselves freely. Let us, in the process, uh, continue uh, to keep St. Kitts and Nevis, or to get St. Kitts back, I should say, to that enviable place position of being one of the freest countries in the entire world. On this program, my street dog family, we try to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly uh, to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Lybird, and I give Almighty God thanks for blessing me with yet another opportunity to join you in conversation on yet another occasion. And as your host, my sweet dog family, I pledge, I continue to remain an untiring advocate of truthfulness. And I can assure you that nothing is watered down Absolutely nothing is watered down on this program. In no way or watered down in any way, whether by omission or exaggeration, to make it more interesting. Because I consider it my duty, my bounden duty, to present to you the unvarnished truth, my sweet dog family, I consider it my duty to present to you the unvarnished truth about governance in my country, my street dog family. I want to say good night to my young brigade and a happy anniversary to to uh, to a uh, young Dwayne. I don't know if he will hear me, but his mom would tell him that pops said happy anniversary. A happy independence, rather, to Shamar, Kevin, and Tristan. And to that special lady, now back in St. Louis. A very, very pleasant night. Guess you're back home by now. And I, it was wonderful, wonderful, some moments that we had together. On a solemn note, though, my straight dog family, um, I heard of the passing 
quite strange but true of two sisters uh, one following the other uh, Miss Marion Williams of Keon uh, the mother of uh, Marvet and Valen and the entire white posse I think I could call them all the entire family I have also heard of the sad passing of Mrs. Madri Wharton who has gone to the great beyond the mother of Lonlia and uh, Zanja uh, uh, Wharton Lonlia my former co-worker we've also heard of the passing of Dr. Kelvin Jones Pastor Dr. Kelvin Jones we extend condolences to his wife and his entire family at each time I, I extend condolences or extend profound sympathy to those who have lost loved one, I'm always reminded of the fact that we can say anything, but as I said, like Jimmy Cliff sang, only who feels it knows it. So I want to just to implore the family that God is in the midst of everything and to remember as well Death is just a process. So again, ex- we extend condolences to the entire families. It is in fact, I did mention Charles Pemberton over there, and the, the Crosby family we extend, and the Pemberton family, we extend condolences as well. And all those who may have lost loved ones, my straight dog family, uh, it's, you know, it's a difficult time these times. And we just, again, extend our profound condolences. Normally we have what we call our observations in review. And that is the time when we highlight the issues of the day. We do some reflection. We may then ask a few questions, such as what was accomplished? How has it helped others? What has changed since then? And what can be expected next also what we have learned as a people because it ought to be a learning process or the time and our first observation we recall that in our last episode we made the point that after 40 years of independence the federation yearns for leadership And we ask ourselves in the process, what kind of leader do we have who fails to act solely in the best public interest? And we ask ourselves, what kind of leader do we have who places himself under the obligation and influence of a man called Garth Lucian Wilkin as we go into the 40th anniversary of independence. Garth Lucian Wilkin, who on three separate occasions transgressed, transgressed, violated the laws of our land. And lest we forget that an high court judge, Tamara Gill, opine that social security contributions and a lot of have been said about social security and the development bank this and the development bank that owes social security no talk has been mentioned nothing has been mentioned about NHC that owes social security and the New Zealand administration that owes social security but this focus is on the development bank and we understand why. But those in the development bank, I know they can defend themselves, so I need not defend them. But what about the one who, as I said, advises Dr. Jew? So what kind of leader, I ask, do we have 
who places himself under the obligation and influence of a man like Garth Lucian Wilkin, who himself, according to the opinion of Tamara Gill, uh, Justice Tamara Gill, let me get that right, opined that social security contributions that were paid by Garth Lucian Wilkin, or I should add that were paid late by Garth Lucian Wilkin, constituting breaches, not one breach, not two breaches, but three breaches, are liable to call prosecution. Justice Gill further opined that the social security payments made by Garth Lucian Wilkin after the time prescribed by the legislation constituted a criminal offense whether or not the law was strictly enforced. And as we speak, my straight dog family, there are persons at 1840, yes, in Her Majesty's prison, serving time for the same breaches of the law, but their last name is not Wilkin, and they are not the chief legal advisor to Dr. Drew, whom he appointed as the Attorney General and Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs. And I submit that poor behavior must be challenged wherever it occurs. And I ask myself, what kind of leader do we have who does not account to the public for his decisions and actions and never submits himself to the scrutiny necessary to ensure this? His decision to employ 30 or 32 ambassadors and or special advisors at home and abroad is the biggest national secret. Biggest national secret. So where is honesty? Where is integrity? Where is objectivity and accountability 40 years after independence? And that's, those are fair questions to be posed. My sweet talk family, the second observation relates to Dr. Drew, our Prime Minister, who, as we say in local plans, he lies a yard and lies abroad. Because Dr. Drew went to Toronto, Canada to meet the Senkis Nevis Association, I think it's called. And he had lots of things to say. Lots of things he uttered while they were in Canada. And one thing that came to mind, that is no surprise to me, because Dr. Jew, as my grandmother would say, lies like when a horse is trotting. A horse is trotting. And he said this in Toronto, Canada, just about a week ago. But I would like to point out again that from among you, Mr. Leo Eskridge, Mr. Leo Eskridge, we had a problem with dialysis, and Leo saw it. And he didn't just sat back. He said, no, these are my people. I can help. He got on his phone and talked to him. It was Mr. Payne. And they got in touch with Mr. Austin. He was there. He got in touch with me as well. And in quick order, he said, look, I work in this field in Canada. And I can help. And I said, let's get it done. And so he was able to send to us a donation that he got from Canada, Canada of 15 dialysis machines to send. We 
only have four machines that were working. And people had to be, the nurses had to be working up until 11 and 12 o'clock in the night and start at 4 o'clock in the morning. My Street Talk family, Dr. Drew lies a yard and lies abroad. Because why did he say he's talking about people being critical of these quote unquote hand me down machines? People of St. Kitts and Nevis have the right to criticize our Prime Minister, especially if he is economic with the truth. Because he said this to the country, my sweet dog family. He said this. I want to get into the issue of the Ministry of Health, which I'll speak to um, as well. We have a number of critical things that have taken place there. For example, we have new dialysis machines, about 15 of them. I'll get into that. That have arrived. We'll um, have the official presentation uh, tomorrow. So, it was not me, it was not you, it was not any of us who said there were new machines. When he just said, or he said recently in, in, in Toronto, that he was called by some Leo Estridge, and we commend him. He means well. Although many are somewhat weary that while in some development developing countries uh, medical equipment donations enable hospitals to access much needed technology however in a high income country like Senkis and Nevis we ought to be concerned that donations of hand-me-down machines 20 year old machines may do more harm than good, my straight dog family. So it is important for countries like ours to carefully evaluate the condition, safety standards, and compatibility of use hospital equipment like dialysis machines that are 20 years old and older before accepting such donations or considering such reuse. And he spoke about St. Kitts only having uh, four machines. Again, he's fabricating my straight dog family. And in fact, we, back then, as a team unity administration, purchased five brand new machines. And we, I can say to you, without fear of contradiction, that the unit all told had nine machines. We know that the, the, the unit can only accommodate eight machines at one time, but they don't normally use um, all the machines uh, at one, one time as they alternate them, I'm advised. But to say... That some people work until 11 o'clock and comes back, uh, come back early in the morning. A hospital never closes. A hospital runs 24-7. Nurses and doctors are on shift. And even if you have a ship, the ship system allows that. You may work uh, from late afternoon to late night, come back in the morning, and you get your two or three days off. In, I think in our case, there's a two day off. Nurses in hospitals that work 12 hours. Sometimes get three days off. And that's how the shift system works. And again, my sweet dog family, to say that nothing was done is so false. And I was happy. I was happy, my sweet dog family, to see the former prime minister at the church service and I understand that he was invited. And I confirm that he was, in fact, written to and invited uh, and that was magnanimous of uh, the nurse manager and you see that letter on your screen which says dated august 28th 2023 dear dr harris the hemodialysis unit at the joseph nathaniel general france hospital 
was officially opened on September 6, 2013. And this year marks 10 years of service to the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis for persons living with end-stage renal disease. The staff of the hemodialysis unit, it continues, will be hosting a week of activities from September 3rd to September 10th, 2023, under the theme, No Kidneys, No Life. We are therefore inviting you to celebrate with us at a ch the church service on Sunday, 3rd September 2023 at the Faith Tabernacle Church of God located at the Old Road. The service commences at 10 a.m. The letter continues, my sweet dog family. We at the we wish to thank you, beg your pardon, for your service to the Federation over the past seven years of your leadership. We applaud your efforts and contributions to help our patients, clients, and visitors. Allow me to use this forum to highlight your initiative in reducing the cost from $800 EC per treatment to $400 EC dollars. Thank you once again for your consideration. Your presence with us will be greatly appreciated. We do apologize for the late notice. Your kind consideration is anticipated as we await a favorable response to be present with us at such a commendable milestone. And this is signed by the assistant nurse manager of the hemodialysis unit. At least... Uh, someone had the, the, the thought to recognize service rendered by the former leader. My sure talk family, we expect nothing better from Terence Duke. And he will go to all ends or any end to try to make the point as he continues to do so, and I admit uh, foolishly, to make, try to make the point that nothing was done under the Team Unity Administration. Another silly point that Dr. Joe continues to peddle is the National Bank never paid a dividend. And my sweet dog family, that is so, you know, I, I, I can't find words to express it. And you ask yourselves, why does Dr. Joe continue to peddle this nonsense? This is what he told his audience again in Toronto, my sweet dog family. You have shares in National Bank, you did not get any dividends last year, but you'll get the dividends this year. I can say that to you. Um, and so we are expecting to be a profit, a turnaround with a profit so that we can pay dividends. So that indigenous bank, which is the largest indigenous bank in the OECS, that is why the central bank, I think, is in St. Vincent Davis, has rebounded significantly well over the last year. My Sri Dog family, I wonder why our Prime Minister don't think before he speaks. Because a young student accosted me one, one day, but not, let me not say accosted, uh, approached me uh, some days ago and asked me if the Prime Minister is daft. And it shocked me. And I said to her, why are you asking such a question about the Prime Minister? It's the, our Prime Minister. She said, but he acts as if he's daft. And little that I, I knew, this lady, young lady, uh, listens to straight talk every Monday and Thursday. And she surprised me when she said that she remember that I 
posted uh, pages from the financial statements of the bank. And I was really taken back that she really was following Straight Talk. And she reminded me of this statement or uh, that I sh- posted of the bank. And it's a consolidated statement of the financial position as of June 30, 2022. And can be found by Straight Talk family on page 56 of the report. And it will glean on the shareholders' equity. You will glean on the shareholders' equity, I swear, dog family. And it speaks to note 20. And it, 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 it uh, cites the issued share capital of $141.7 uh, million dollars. And speaks to the accumulated reserves as well of $451 million. But it points to, to Note 20, my straight dog family. And let's get to Note 20. Let me see if I... Or rather, we should move to Note 29. Note 29, my straight dog family, uh, reads as you can glean from your screen. Note 29, my straight dog family, states, and if you look at note 29, my straight dog family, it speaks to the dividends. And it speaks to dividends, my straight dog family. And on the note 29, as I said to you, you can glean from that. And it says, my straight dog family, and I quote, look at note 29 on your screen. It says, and I quote, the consolidated financial statements reflect total dividends of 41 million $850,000 during the year. It says the amount represents a cash dividend payment of five cents per share. 6 point seven million dollars paid in August the twenty-four or twenty-fourth, twenty twenty one. And it continues. And five percent, and a five percent, beg your pardon, stock dividend of six million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for the financial year ended June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. So why on earth is Doctor Joe continuing to peddle the nonsense? Nonsense. And it goes on to say, and a cash dividend payment of. 20 cents per share or 28 million 350,000 for the financial year ended June 31st was paid on December 16, 2021. But for a 5% stock dividend for the financial year ended June 30, 2022 was paid. So Dr. Joe, please stop peddling your nonsense. There are more important things you are to deal with, uh, uh, Dr. Joe. More important things. Because, for example, the, the non-performing loans, NPL, at the bank, loans that are not paid by, by uh, Christoph Harbour, and if you, if you, you can glean from that excerpt found in the financial statements from the chairperson Carol Body, and 
it says at the bottom paragraph to your left by the Straight Dog family, non-performing loans continue to be a major area of concern. We had ratcheted, ratcheted, ratcheted up our efforts to recover loans in the non-performing loans portfolio. Who has not paid these loans? Christoph Harbour, Peterson Hill. Those are the culprits, my straight dog family. So Dr. Drew must cease and desist. And he, when he speaks, he must try to speak with some authority if he's going to act like a minister of finance. He must also recognize as well, my straight dog family, that the chairperson, the chairperson, in fact, uh, report to the shareholders and she said and I quote deposits improved by 12% and 9% over 2020 and 2021 respectively our lending has continued to show resilience and our gross loans stand at just over 1 billion this achievement reflects a 15% and 11% growth over 2021 and 2020, respectively. Dr. Joe seems to be selective in things he wants to say and address when it comes to finance and the banking business. But Straight Talk will keep him honest. And we won't allow him to get away with the nonsense that he peddles. Our third observation and final observation uh, tonight, my straight dog family, relates to the housing project, which so long was so long overdue. We gathered there was a groundbreaking ceremony after almost a year at Taylor's Village, my street dog family. And we must commend the slow student for at least getting that project off the ground so that people who need shelter, people who want homes, can find homes, albeit we know for a fact that these houses are aimed at satisfying those who are bankable. No matter what they try to, 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 to cover up from us, my street dog family, it would be come to light. But what was very interesting, my street dog family, was the Comments of Brian Singh, who said this today, my street dog family. Very, very interesting. Good morning to one and all, um, Mr. Chairman, of the Prime Minister, of the Deputy Prime Minister, Cabinet colleagues, Chairman of the NHC, and General Manager of the and all the other members, members of the media. Today is a special day for me to oh, the people of Sanky, because I feel I'm a condition more than Chairman of the NHC. But I am glad to be here, and uh, I want to say that it's so astonishing that, you know, that something like this will happen around this time. It's the anniversary of the independence, and it shows the independence, the independent thinking mind of this government. Um, I want to thank Dr. Hanley, first of all, for his resilience and not giving up in making this thing happen. Dr. Hanley. to thank the Honourable Prime Minister. I have met many Prime Ministers and many Prime Ministers in the region and Dr. Drew is a gem out of all. Yeah. Last time I said he was a man for the people and of the people. 
I think it go both ways. <laughs> and I want to thank you. You have made a dream come true, not for your, just for your government, <coughs> but for the people of the Federation. And I say thank you a thousand times. <laughs> it would be remiss of me to, not to mention that all this happened because of the people. The people of the Federation created city, not just the Prime Minister and his cabinet. <coughs> oh, why? Because you voted Labour in, back into power. A Labour government is doing what the people need, not what they want you to do, what they need. And I'm saying to you, on behalf of East Coast, on behalf of East Coast Housing Development and the National Housing Corporation, we have partnered together with the government, led by the Honorable Prime Minister, to make this happen. We are not just building houses for you all. What we have created, and I want to use Dr. Hanley's word, we have created homes. Homes for people of the Federation. People, you all might not see, have never seen something like this before, but we are saying we are building this to withstand the test of time. We are giving you something here that you have never realized before. We are not just partnering today. Don't forget I mentioned I was a more condition than Mr. White. Eh? So my job is not to come here today, build the homes and go back. I'm not leaving. Your, the, the deceased then the is from my Trinidad, my brother so so she said Anna leaving the only time she left because she died but her spirit is still there and I'm gonna die now I want to make sure that every individual who applied for a home under this smart house initiative this housing revolution that they realize their dream and I know with the cabinet led by the prime minister and the deputy prime minister this will happen no two ways about it I want to in closing give praise and thanks to Almighty God because at the end of the day I grew up with my grandmother and she said always give praise and thanks. If we don't do that, we come like a headless chicken. So I want to say thank you again for having me, Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, members of Cabinet and Mr. White, thank you again to you and the General Manager of NEC for your accommodation. You all have been more than accommodating. Like I said, I've been to all the countries in the Caribbean you work. You all take the cake. So we expect a birthday cake for Christmas. <laughs> I thank you. May God bless you. I'm, 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 I'm really kind. sorry to have bored you with well, the entire entire uh, set of remarks. But you would recognize so. my street dog family that we know here that, uh, Honorable Dr. Singh referred to Dr. Ju as a gem, to use his words. Thank you very much. to Dr. Ju as a gem. You know? And that we found very interesting. And my straight dog family, he never seen a prime minister, he said. Uh, like Dr. Jew. Never seen a prime but be frank, he never built a house in his life. And I'm certain that Rowley, Dr. Rowley, the Trinidad Prime Minister, would not even entertain him, much less to consider building these Lego houses, as someone called them, in Trinidad and Tobago. And don't forget, they're all guaranteed. Guaranteed by the, the uh, government of St. Kitts and Nevis. And the contract signed by the NHC, my straight dog family. And those are my observations in review for tonight, my straight dog family. Those are my observations in review uh, for tonight. And we want to move right into our we want to move right into our thesis uh, for tonight, which I have entitled my thesis I have entitled or I have titled rather Time to put country uh, time to put country above self. 
And my Straight Talk family, on this, the 18th day, on this, the 18th day of September 2023, my Straight Talk family, or to be exact, on the eve of our 40th anniversary of our independence, there's one question I will ask tonight. Or one of many questions I should say I will ask tonight. Can we all agree that the time has now come for petitions and divisions to set aside our differences, my straight dog family? Can we agree that the time has now come for petitions and divisions to set aside our differences? Can we all agree that failure to do so would only tear us apart as a federation of St. Kitts and Nevis? It would tear us further apart I should say, when we need to come together to tackle the real problems that we face. Today, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis is as divided as it was 141 years ago. I say so because in 1882, 140 years ago, the people of Nevis protested against a union with St. Kitts. This union of St. Kitts and Nevis has been controversial since 1882, thus deriving a constitution, one of political expediency, I may add, that specifically provides a path to independence for Nevis. The constitution of St. Kitts and Nevis is rather unusual in that it provides Nevis with a great deal of autonomy and contains a provision allowing Nevis to secede should a two-thirds majority of the island's citizens vote for secession. And recall... They did in 1998, but the referendum failed to achieve the required two-thirds majority for independence. I posit the view, however, that the road to independence began in earnest when St. Kitts, Nevis, and Anguilla became an associated state of the United Kingdom. Statehood, it was called, lasted for, or from 1967 to 1983. Yes, statehood as it was called, lasted from 1967 to 1983, my straight dog family. Anguilla immediately seceded nonetheless, and nine years later in 1976, began to be governed under a new constitution. In 1980, Anguilla became a separate British dependency and remains in that disposition to this day. St. Kitts Nevis therefore remained a colony of the United Kingdom from 1882 to 1967, my straight dog family, from 1882 to 1967. Now, very interesting though, the previous coat of arms that was adopted in 1967 by the colony of St. Kitts, Nevis, and Anguilla was almost identical to our existing coat of arms. And curiously, or ironically, the motto back then was unity in Trinity. 
The current constitution of St. Kitts and Nevis was adopted on the 23rd of June 1983 and took effect when the country became independent on the 19th of September 1983. I mentioned before, it consists of 11 chapters and various schedules which establishes, establishes the rights, responsibilities, and definitions of citizens of the Federation. It also provides the form and structure of government and enumerates the powers of the different branches of government. Its treatment of the island of Nevis, I see again, is rather unusual when considered or when considering federated nations. My straight dog family, the coat of arms of St. Kitts and Nevis was adopted in 1983 and carries the motto, country above self. It is a statement, my straight dog family, that was articulated way back in 1961 by then President John F. Kennedy uh, of the United States of America. And President Kennedy, recall, had this to say, my straight dog family, uh, back in 1961, when JFK had this to say, my straight dog family, at his inauguration way back, as I said, in 1961. This is what John Fitzgerald Kennedy had to say, my straight dog family. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Finally, whether you are citizens of America, or citizens of the world. Ask of us here the same high standards of strength and sacrifice which we ask of you. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. My street dog family, This is a philosophy of collective work called country 
above self. Our current leaders who have been given this mandate by the people must therefore possess sincerity to serve and to put the interests of the country above their own. The continuous conflict and narrow political culture will only show St. Kitts and Nevis as a federation which is unstable and fragile. There are differences in our ideologies and agendas amongst us, but there are similarities, especially in the agenda for the development and people's welfare to establish a more prosperous federation. Of maximum importance must be the well-being of the people and the country expressed through mutual respect and reciprocal deeds of goodwill and understanding. What happened in 2022, my sweet dog family, was a result of that fragility or fragility that has led to instability that is rooted in what some call one manism of a selfish leader who thought, my sweet dog family, he was going to be a kingmaker. Currently, we hold a delicate balance of power with our seats contributed to create and sustain in office the team unity government, which has led St. Kitts and Nevis since February of 2015. Let me be clear. This party, the Council Citizens Movement, has been and shall remain firmly in the role of kingmaker. For all who have ears to hear, let them hear. My sweet dog family, a known secessionist, Mark Bradley started to create mischief about fear share. My sweet dog family. I make the point, my Kijishan brothers and sisters, that when I come as premier of the island of Nevis, and representative in chief of the over 13,000 souls that call Nevis home. I do not come as some mendicant cap in hand. I do not come asking for help or for a favor. I come as a full citizen of this country who is entitled to claim on behalf of the people of Nevis an equitable share of the revenue flowing into Bastia from national efforts. Whichever political party or coalition of parties holds the reins of power in Church Street, I wish to be clear that the people of Nevis will never stop demanding their equitable share of the national pie. But all of a sudden, my sweet dog family, the kingmaker has gone quiet. He has stopped demanding. As Dr. Jew has rightly taken this position. We haven't agreed on many things, but we have agreed on this thing. I will sit with the Premier of Nevis, and we have to find a way to hammer out the tough issues, the tough issues of CBI revenues, the tough issues that deal with aspects of the Constitution that really need to be um, dealt with so that we can have a better relationship, so that these matters, they don't raise their head again. So anything we do has to be done um, in a legislative framework that would have the strength to survive. Um, and therefore, that is how I think we have to move. But I'm committed to resolving these issues. And where there are uh, inequities or where there are uh, any sense of mistreatment and not be given a fair share, we have to deal with those type of issues. So we have to deal with it fairly so that Sink it feels satisfied and Nevis feels satisfied. And my sweet dog family, there is in fact the legislative framework, the constitution. But this elementary argument, a schoolboy argument about non tax revenue and tax revenue, they're all economic classifications, they're revenue. But the kingmaker 
Mark Brantley. Meanwhile, has racked up on half of a billion dollar debt in Nevis. And the Nevis Island administration is bordering on the brink of bankruptcy. Our debt as of July 2023, our total foreign debt stood at $30.8 million. In terms of our domestic debt, that number stands at $449.4 million. When that is combined then with the foreign debt, we have a total NIA debt $480.3 million. In terms of government guaranteed debt, and that total public sector debt comes up to $36.7 million. When then you combine the of the public corporations with the central government debt of $480.3 million, we have a cumulative total debt position of the island of Nevis at this point, that is corporations of $544.7 million. By any measure, it is a significant number. Significant, yes. That puts the kingmakers back against the wall. So what he does, he panders to Dr. Joe. Here's his assessment of Dr. Joe. You asked about fair share. Well, that, of course, continues to be an issue. Uh, I mentioned um, Prime Minister Drew. Thus far, he has been a man of his word. Thus far, in terms of our discussions and the issues, he has responded positively. But we uh, look forward to a good working relationship with the federal government. And that's over a year now. He hasn't got his equitable share. But Mark and company mashed up a good thing. For the period of 2015 to 2020, our economy experienced remarkable growth under the Team Unity Administration, of which he was a part. I was as well. And the records are there. Our economy was thriving. Prior to COVID-19 or the coronavirus-induced pandemic, St. Kitts Nevis had the strongest projected national growth rate in the Eastern Caribbean of 3.5% for 2020. And these facts can be gleaned from the United Nations Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ICLA. The World Bank confirmed that we had the highest GDP per capita in the Eastern Caribbean. And this derived more opportunities for jobs, higher standards of living, and better public services as private businesses were more successful and as such contributed larger amounts to the treasury. We also had uh, the lowest ratio of debt to GDP in the Eastern Caribbean. And we still have that. According to the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank figures, which, has rec which have recognized us as the first country in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union to achieve the 60% debt to GDP benchmark, my straight dog family. The Monetary Council set a target of 2030 for member countries to achieve a public sector debt to GDP ratio of 60%. I congratulate St. Kitts and Nevis on being the first independent country in the ECCU to reach this target. And yes, these are facts. And this was no mean feat for our Twin Island Federation. What this meant is that as a country, it cost less on the money we had to pay back, also the interest on that money the country owed. Thus, we had more money to invest in our public infrastructure, education of our young people, and the health of our population. Some would try to make you believe that there was no investment in seven years, my straight talk family. What nonsense. We have been getting calls, lots of calls, two and three o'clock in the morning. I imagine in other parts of the world, it is day when it is the four in the morning here in St. Kitts and Nevis. We have been bombarded by persons who are interested in investing in St. Kitts and Nevis. And of note, we have not seen any significant major investment 
in the last seven years. And therefore, I think our people must know that people are ready to invest in St. Kitts and Nevis again. But we need leaders to be sincere and to put the country's interests above self. How could any leader, except he was on the planet Mars, not know about the $71 million upgrade of the island's main road, the most comprehensive road improvement project in the past 20 years? I was the Minister of Public Infrastructure, and on behalf of the government, I had previously reported that next there would be improvements to the entire road network or our secondary roads. The expected outcome was greater ease of travel and safety and enhancements for pedestrian and vehicular traffic alike. The Old Road Bay project, my straight dog family, the Robert L. Bradshaw runway was resurfaced. And the three taxiways, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, along with the western portion of the apron parking, was also resurfaced. Brand new solar runway lighting were installed at the Robert Newell and Bradshaw Airport. Traffic signals or traffic lights in Bastille were installed. Two bus terminals, the east and the west bus line terminals, with a promise for a third Terminal for the St. Peter's bus line. A ferry terminal, my street dog family. Every single dirt road in Taylor's village was resurfaced. Drainage in East Bastia. How could we forget? When rain came, Pond Road and Frigate Bay Road were like rivers. Pedestrian access to and from Bird Rock and the second cruise pier receives highest a claim from all the captains, my straight dog family. They receive highest acclaims from all the captains of the cruise vessels that call at our port. It is very nice. The new beer is uh, very wide and uh, it is much better actually than the previous one. And uh, it's a very nice construction. And for us, from the marine side of you, you have enough fenders, enough bollards, nice and safe, with much better angle against the wind also. So congratulations, this is amazing. Amazing. And that's the general view of every single captain. As a matter of fact, before the construction of that new cool space started, the designs were presented to the technical telecommittee of the FCCA my straight dog family, and they had their input. And whatever they recommended was done. But after 40 years, my straight dog family, as the granddaughter of Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell, and my daughter, C.A. Psyche Southwell, we must look back, then move forward, putting country above self, my straight dog family. 1983. Who could have imagined that St. Kitts and Nevis would be among the highest, if not still the highest, income earning country in the ECCU? Look at where we are. The Marriott's ballroom, nestled on a beachfront property in Frigate Bay, arguably the hub for our entire tourism industry. This was my grandfather's dream. C.A. Psyche Southwell gets to now live the dream of her grandfather, the Right Honorable C.A. Paul Southwell. I get to live it, you get to live it, we get to live it. A deep water harbor that can dock four cruise ships simultaneously let me tell you all something. I took a cruise to Belize a few years ago. And you can imagine how I kind of stuck up my nose when they tell me I have to get off the ship to get on a boat to get to the port. Port. 
Belize needs to talk to St. Kitts and Nevis because we're out here doing it. <laughs> Don't even get me started about Port Zante, sitting on a reclaimed land. Can you imagine the ingenuity, the foresight, the bravery it had to take to move on a project like that? Can you imagine? So here we are, my friends. In 2023, can somebody please show me a problem that we cannot solve? <clears throat> what problem can we not solve in 2023? In 2023, we have more resources, more intelligence, more access, more tools, and hence more power more power to advance solutions that stick. Solutions that stick and edify the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Those lessons from the past are wonderful teachers. And sometimes you have to look back, then move forward. You have to look back, but then you have to move forward. So my friends, I want to leave you the same way I came with this question. What will we do in the next 350,640 hours? What will we do in the next 14,610 days? What will we do in the next 2,087 weeks? What will we do in the next 480 months? What will we do in the next 40 years? My sweet old family, pregnant questions. And a lot has been said about the integrity in public life. But before I conclude, I implore us all to call on our leaders to be principled. By that I mean being selfless, demonstrate integrity, be objective and accountable. They must account for their stewardship. They must be honest, open, my straight talk family. Additionally, we must pay attention to the principles of the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law, which are closely related to the concept of separation of powers. The separation of powers must continue to exist so that responsibilities can be executed without any interference and or disturbance, thus avoiding any form of abuse of power and ensuring justice for all parties. Let us hold the public sector accountable if we are going to further improve the efficiency of governance and management systems as well as the delivery of services to the people. The public sector needs to realize this effort continuously based on the principle of working transparently, ethically, and with integrity. The public sector must remain as an important machinery which plans the course of administration, the process of formation and implementation of all policies introduced by the government. Real problems will not be solved by government. Rather, change begins as a grassroots movement. The world is changing faster than ever. And if we continue to squabble amongst ourselves, we will get nowhere. Problems of the Federation at this time must be placed squarely at the feet of Dr. Terence Michael Drew and his slow student who boasts or named himself as doctor. A doctorate he got from a university he never attended. But Dr. Drew is acting like a fascist or centralized autocrat who are calling to him introduce an independence reset 
today. So he speaks about electricity and water. He speaks in all subjects. He is committed. He said not to walk in the shadow of Denzel Douglas. He declared, my sweet dog family, that he cannot sit down with Timothy Harris. Timothy Harris my sweet was dog family. in the Labour Party. Outside of politics or anything else, this is somebody who would be very difficult to sit down with, to negotiate. And I know I cannot sit to negotiate with. My sweet dog family, in conclusion, it is the general consensus that Dr. Drew needs help. The country needs help. And even his foot soldiers have publicly confessed that the performance of this administration is not satisfactory. The performance of this administration is poor, to say the least, my straight dog family. We were told on the platform that investors were knocking on the door, you know, before they got into office. They were given the opportunity to go into office. We are the investors now, not even one. All I'm simply saying is that you make all these trips abroad and you come back to the country. And you're not even saying, well, you know, I'm talking to Mr. So-and-so, I'm talking to that so-and-so. Nothing at all. And we're supposed to just listen to words like sustainable development and framework and, you know, I mean, all those sound bites. I call them platitudes to make us feel good. We try and take those to the supermarket. And every week, you know, you have different people coming on. I call them the spin doctors, telling you the same thing over and over. And when you talk this way, people who are not at the out there suffering, getting upset with you because of their support. And I support the party, you know, but I don't support what is going on right now. I'm making that abundantly clear. I support labor as a party. That will not change. And I can defensively say that. But when it comes to what I see going on right now with the presence of the ministers and how they're operating, it's not satisfactory and it's not about looking favors from anybody. I want none, absolutely. That is why I stand by my word. This is the reset that the country needs after 40 years. Not those gifts he has come bearing for independence. How many of us have the courage to do what that lady has done? She has put her country above self. Do we have the courage to put aside our differences for a greater cause to put country above self? The future of our federation depends on, upon it. How will you put country before self? I need to hear the stories that you would ins that would inspire the federation. But I believe that after 40 years of independence, it is time to put country above self. That's the reset we want for independence. And that's my story tonight. And I'm not going to change it. But I'll open the lines and entertain your calls. I'll entertain your emails, my straight dog family. And for those who are minded to call, the numbers are 646 829 6672 and or 869 663 6672. My email address for those who like the cloak of anonymity is straight talk patches. That's one word S T R A I G H T T A L K P A T C H E S. Straight talk patches at gmail.com. I always like to employ you when I open the lines to respect others. And of course, to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concerned. Let us try to build goodwill and better friendships. And let's ensure that the things we say and or do will be beneficial to all concerned. And the process of doing and saying those things, let us strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. Again, if you've joined me late, a happy independence to all as we go to the lines at 9.16 and say good night to this, our first caller. Call you live. Good call. night. Good night, my brother Patches. Uh, hello, good night, Mr. W. Yes. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Well said and well said. Thank you. But not done. Hmm. Look. I am going to elaborate on how the country 
can you? And first of all, one they have to go within themselves and figure out what is right for them. Because you see, in the beginning, we all were born and programmed in our DNA. And above, below dignity is unity. You speak good against people. Never speak bad. Even if you know it, hold your tongue. Do not force your tongue. And everyone have to be like, need to make a sale. It doesn't matter what they are selling. They have to be proactive. Diligently. In order to get a sale. Else, if you don't have those things, you're not. And speaking on a broad and the world stage. You see, I was a salesman, so I don't bother to be mad. But and if I'm mad for a reason that you consider petty, then you hold your tongue. Speak kind words. The same way if you're trying to approach a lady of love. So, what else do I need to add? Go within your heart. Because we are all humans. And we have the ability to go or stay in whatever shape or form. But people grow up like they are being programmed and their dignity has been washed away temporarily. But you could revoke it and bring it back. But one has to find that within themselves. No one can find that for you. Find it for yourself. And that will go a long way. You will get along with each other. It doesn't matter what have what, who got what, where does you get what this from. Do not like people think, and this thing I talk about jealousy and envy. We got to put those things aside and bring the good substance from your dignity. And nothing wrong in apologize. To someone, whether you are wrong or right, you got to be the big person. Time to criticize and get on the people's skin, it doesn't make no sense. Let bygones be bygones. I like um, that commentary that Dr. Drew made, a comment on tape, that he would refuse to sit down with Timothy because Timothy is a hard man to negotiate with. Man, those are petty. There are ways to get around those kind of things. Because remember, we are all human beings. And it's not a crime to be a human being because that's what we are. And that's a fact which we run away from that. But I have something else to ask you, but I will leave it to other people who will need to call in. But I have a very important um, question to ask you. Okay. But thanks to the world. Thank the world for listening. Thank you as well for your intervention. We go straight back to the lines and thank this caller for holding. Caller, you're live. Mr. Curtis, good night. Hello, my dear brother. How are thou? Sounds like... And the, how are you, sir? Oh, I am peaceful. Sounds like the Bible man. Happy independence to you when it comes. Happy independence. Yes, sir. Mr. Curtis. So... Um, on the 20th of September, that day is my birthday. Yes. I'm a September born. How oh, Mr. Bratcher born on the, on the 16th, uh -huh. and he was a straight powered man. He didn't use to play. So... This Bible man here, he not play with nobody. <laughs> and nobody, we not get up, we not get a count to nobody. And nobody blood is going to rest on my shoulder, Mr. Patton. What? <laughs> my God is good. And I'm saying it to you, Mr. Pat. 
says, When God says, Jeremiah, do not afraid of their faces. Jeremiah chapter 1. And read the whole passage of scripture. And so, my brother, tonight, God calls us as watchmen to praise the word. And I am not going to stop preaching the word. Mm. We don't care what nobody says. God said, you must look and listen. In Isaiah 56, the Adam the cannot mark. If you read the whole Isaiah from 10 to 11, it will tell you they all gone their own way. So when God called them to preach the word, the grand, they do their own thing. Mr. Patrick, it is time for, for us to stand up and say, Thus said the Lord. Mm. Mr. Patrick, I am going to say two things tonight. It's going to be a great white throne judgment. And that belongs to the, the wicked. And who are born again, God is going to we have to be on account. Because it, listen here. In Psalm said, God is not going to judge the righteous with the sinner. With the, he are not going to judge the righteous we do it yet. So who am born again? Who am washing the blood? I fall for them. But me, I make my calling and selection to, to be with the Lord. Mr. Patrick, have a pleasant night and thank God for you. All the best, Mr. Patrick. All the best to you as well, my brother, and happy birthday when it comes. Uh, we almost celebrated independence with you. <laughs> but have a happy birthday when it comes, and a healthy one. May you see many, many more. Okay. Let's, uh, my sweet dog family, I'll juggle the emails with the call. So this email reads, I'm happy for those working and employed citizens who got the one-off 1,000 independence gift. But what about the unemployed uh, and destitute? They get nothing. Makes no sense. This is just another example of a government trying to give the appearance that things are happening in the country. Don't be fooled. This is just political gimmicks. A band-aid. No investment. CBI at, the, at a crossroad. The country is at a standstill. It is not sustainable. The poor will get poorer and they will end up going to the IMF, who will dictate and tell them to streamline the public service and fire people. Read this email. And I, I, I like that. And I said the reset we, needs, uh, we need, beg your pardon, is this reset after 40 years of independence. And after 40 years of independence, my straight dog family, we ask ourselves, where do we go from here? Good night, Patches. Read this email. We the small men are so fed up of Dr. Drew and his stupidity. We are watching him carefully because we, the pensioners and insured persons in this country, contributing to Social Security, I will not be taken for a ride with the dummy prime minister he keeps talking about Social Security Development Bank, National Bank, the most stable and useful economic and financial institutions in the country. Does Dr. Drew have 60 maths, economics accounts, principles of business, or any such O-level subjects? We are not fools. 
Using smart schemes and wasting our hard-earned money will not make you popular. We see you as a joker. He took away $500 per month from many of us, but keep paying his advisors and ambassadors over $10,000 in salaries and allowances for doing absolutely nothing. This is the worst government ever, reads that email. I listened to Mr. Singh and felt insulted by his patronizing remarks. I can't believe that the people of St. Kisnevis would fall for what uh, Trinidadians call Mamogai or BS, my street dog family. Miss the Patches, good evening. I did not get a chance to fully listen to the House of Assembly today, but I was hoping that it would clarify some things that I heard on the street saying the government will reset monies owed by customers to Skellig. Two, the government will pay $1,000 to all citizens who have Social Security. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, listen to Dr. Joe. It, it, it's, you know, it, it, it is a... Uh, it's heart wrenching sometimes, you know, but you wonder what cloud or what planet, planet is he on. He did say, and one has to be very careful with it. I heard him say, and I was just not going to perpetuate it by even playing a song by it from it. But he said that all customers uh, of water and electricity will be. Recon all the disconnected customers will be reconnected. What that means, I don't know. If you were disconnected and, and had a bill for $10,000 or $5,000 or $1,000, would that mean that the, your debt is forgiven? So there's no explanation. I mean, you know, and Jew is such a pathological liar that one has to be cautious, one has to be careful with what he says to, to the country. And I say so respectfully, because if he's saying that Skellig will reconnect all those customers who are disconnected, what's next? So what, as we would say? Are they going to, uh, is their debt to Skellig being forgiven? And this is where he did not go. If you're going to reconnect water, as the debt for water being forgiven, because there's a four, almost a $14 million owed to government for water, uh, not water bills, water invoices that are not being paid. So that's an important question, but you know, he never talks the truth, and he talks in, 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 in such roundabout ways, and so on and so forth. These are things you'll hear him say, and so on and so forth. What does that mean? Uh, is, is a question uh, anybody ought to ask my straight talk family. But this reset is what is needed. We were told on the platform that investors were knocking on the door, you know, before they got into office. They were given the opportunity to go into office. We are the investors now, not even one. All I'm simply saying is that you make all these trips abroad and you come back to the country and you're not even saying, well, you know, I'm talking to Mr. So-and-so, I'm talking to that so-and-so, nothing at all. And we are supposed to just listen to words like sustainable development and framework and, you know, I mean, all those sound bites. I call them platitudes to make us feel good. And we can't take those to the supermarket. And every week, you know, you have different people coming on. I call them the spin doctors, telling you the same thing over and over. And when you talk, they say, people who are not at the out there suffering, getting upset with you because of their support. But I support the party, you know, but I don't support what is going on right now. I'm making that abundantly clear. I support Labour as a party. That will not change. And I can defensively say that. But when it comes to what I see going on right now with the presence of the ministers and how they're operating, it's not satisfactory and it's not about looking favours from anybody. I want none, absolutely. That is why I stand by my word. And this is the reset that the country needs after 40 years Coming with your handouts and your your non-direction or non-directives in terms of what people are getting, uh, it, it won't help us, my straight dog family. 
you know, it just won't help us at all. The people must be guided and guided properly. And you must report what you should say. The debt to Skellig is $1, $2. How much debt should be collected? How much, how much in terms of the, the, the uh, uh, what they call the customers, not negligent, um, there's a term used for, for customers, delinquent customers. What is the total debt owed to Skellig uh, for delinquency or owed by delinquent customers? What is the debt? And tell us whether the government that is the sole subscriber to Skellig will forgive that debt. But to come to tell us or tell the country that, yes, all customers will be reconnected. Yes, they will be reconnected. So what? Are you going to forgive the debt, Dr. Drew? Don't come with no smartness come election time because you are waiting, are winning in the polls. Everybody's saying you don't know what is going on. You're not getting advice uh, from your senior minister and former prime minister who, in fact, recruited you uh, to the Labour Party. You said that you're not going to walk in the shadow of Dr. Douglas. And you said you're not going to speak. You can't sit down uh, with Tim Harris. So what do you want? Where would you go? Who is leading you? Who is leading you, Dr. Drew? A matter of fact, this is another supporter that said this on her Facebook page, my, my dear family uh, uh, and good friend. We need to get worthless and stop pay bills. See, because we're a society that rewards delinquency and hardly ever incentivize uh, diligence. But happy 40th independence reads that Facebook post. Very interesting Facebook post there from my dear uh, sister Tashari. Uh, not my blood sister, but Tashari. But all libraries are one, so I'll heal her. And we need to get what this, she said. But let's just hold the, 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 the government accountable. Where do we go? Where do we go from here, my sweet of family? That's the question we must ask ourselves. How do we get to where we are going? You know, the country needs help. Jew himself needs help. And this is the reset the country needs. The country needs a reset after 40 years of independence. But how many of us have the courage to do what that lady did and out the government she supports? She has put country above herself, above herself. Do we have the courage to put aside our differences for a greater cause, to put country above self? The future of our, of our federation depends upon it. How will you put country before self? I need to hear stories that will inspire the federation. These are the things that I want to hear uh, from you, my straight talk family. This email reads, based on continuing utterances by the prime minister, it is clear that he operates as if he thinks that National Bank is a department of government. He continues to speak as if he is speaking for the bank. He needs to be aware that the government is only a shareholder, a significant one, yes, but the bank does not report to the government in the same way as departments of government do. I'm not suggesting that he should not speak about the bank, but his statements border on suggesting that the government is the one running the bank. This is very dangerous. This is, a, this is a very dangerous development, beg your pardon, for reasons that need no explanation. Yes, he speaks about the bank. When the bank, yes, the government is um, the major, majority shareholder. And the same way he speaks about social security. I mean, he spoke about, uh, I read something in Parliament uh, that he got from, from the, apparently he said he got from the chairperson of social security but what about what about the 2020 and 2021 uh, uh, audited statements is it time for them to be tabled in parliament the legislation says that all the 
the financial statements of the Social Security must be laid on the table in Parliament. 2020 and 2021, those have been audited. Why are they not published uh, on the, the Social Security website? Why are they not tabled in Parliament? This is what you have to do, uh, Dr. Joe, as a minister with responsibility for Social Security, not to come reading something in the Parliament that you got some memorandum or some letter from the chairperson of, of the Social Security. Not to say that you have, you have a appointed this director of social security to do abc the board is appointed and the board according to the law according to the legislation has its functions stipulated as per the legislation uh the social security act uh, to be exact why is jew behaving the way he's behaving is everybody's guess who is advising dr jew i mean he goes to to to, uh, to Canada, and he talks nonsense, my straight dog family. And this, to many people, uh, is very, very troubling. Let's go back to the lines. At 9.38, I'll call you live. Hello, caller. Hi, Patrick. Good night. Good night, my dear. Happy independence to you. <laughs> it's a pity I'm not there for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pity I'm not there. Yes. Anyway, I was listening to Dr. Jew. He must understand he's living in glass house, you know, and he better don't just stone. Sure, sure. Because what happened that when he came out first, when he went into office, mm -hmm. he said that they had $20 million missing from Development Bank. But mm -hmm. the problem is they don't have a chase because it's cash. Mm -hmm. And now last week I listened to him and said that he have um, proof. He could call names about the money missing. Somebody that work in in development bank an employee get this money, go to national bank and change it, and they come back and they get into some room and, and check it out like when people steal money. Mm. You, I do not believe a word that that man said, you know. And I will tell him straight to his face. I don't believe a word that he said. It is hard to believe him. Very hard. You know because he's confused because you can say that first that the money. There's twenty million dollar missing, but it's cash. It's cash. You know how to trail, and all of a sudden you have paper trail with it. Mm -hmm. One hundred and ninety four pages. He was there talking, and then he ta and when the guest, the host, asked him about the the um the, um, the investment, he said that um they opened the country too late. Mm -hmm. I, and he was saying that invest in the investors them calling all the time and and um and. Uh, for two things, and it's almost a like, year now, he didn't do nothing. True, true. And that guy from Trinidad, Chicky Daddy, and that Chicky Daddy and guy there talking, yeah. that Chicky Daddy, Chicky Daddy and guy talking, <laughs> talking. He, he don't even know how he said, Did he build any house in Trinidad? That's one. Eh? He built any house in Trinidad? Uh, everything smart house. He wanted to say it's smart because, I mean, come on. Eh? He don't even know what he's saying. Don't want again to hear him say that how in the independent up in New York, um, tickets sold out over 4,000. Could you mind telling the host? Could you imagine the tickets them sold out? And I understand somebody was talking to me yesterday, and I understand, asked him if I get a ticket because I'm in New York. And I said, no. I said, no, I'm not paying no money to go. He said, it's free. So how did the tickets them sold out? <laughs> How did they get them sold out? <laughs> and it's and and they say it's free. <laughs> so anyway, how we talking now? You like oh, he, he's so in um, that oh, he's, everybody want to see him or whatever. I don't care. I tell them ask. They ask him if I want a ticket, and I don't care for it. I don't care for it. And I could always talk because guess what? I am not looking for no handout, no, no hands up from them. I'm here in New York and I'm well off. So I don't, I don't, I, I could always talk and uh, and he can't do me nothing because I think it's, I would not think it's before he. So he can't do me nothing. Uh, he must come and talk the truth. He ain't do nothing thing for the country. Eh? When it, a lady calling, last caller calling and asking what he do, he always talking about the past, the, pa the past um, prime minister. Tell us what you going to do. I you start to name out all sorts of crap. Anyway, you have a nice uh, independent. You enjoy yourself. We have a lot of reading here anyhow. 
And thanks a lot for your okay. intervention. You have yourself a wonderful okay. uh, evening as well, my dear Straight Talk family. And Dr. Ju, uh, I spoke about the firm that apparently did the for forensic audit of the bank. And uh, that's from M N M N P L L P is the firm which he named that claims has audited the development bank. But uh, there's an article appearing in the Canadian in the Canadian journal Economy, Law and Politics under the caption Serious Concerns raised against some BC accounting firms. And that same firm is one of the firms listed in the firms that have been been uh, listed uh, and this, of the seven firms, uh, Davidson and Company LLP, DCML LLP, Manning Elliott LLP, MNP, that's the firm that did the forensic audit, all with offices in British Columbia, as well as Mac Govern, Hurley, LLP, and Raymond Chabot, uh, Grant Thornton, LLP. And it is a very interesting article, my straight talk family. And it says the Canadian Public Accountability Board has once again raised concerns against several Canadian accounting firms, some of which are responsible for auditing the lion's share of public companies registered in British Columbia. Accountants are considered gatekeepers for the public markets, providing investors with reliable information through audited financial statements uh, and acting as a barrier to corruption, reads this uh, article. But let's go to the lines, and I'll take this call. and Welcome this call. You're live on Straight Up. Yes, caller? Yeah, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Lybert. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm peaceful, my dear brother. Yourself? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. I delivered, I delivered, yeah, um, I delivered your message. Just sorry to interrupt you, but I delivered your message uh, to oh, to your family. So I I I gave her the great. contact, and she promised that she'd call you. Okay. Oh, great! Thanks, yeah, great! Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate my that. Pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, great, great, cons great um, conversation tonight. Um, Thanks. there's been some great callers and some great emails tonight, and I'm happy that right? persons are now. Um, paying attention to some of the minute details. And I believe for myself, that's one of the um, things that I've picked up from you, you know? When you come, you bring the details and you bring the proof as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm very liking that, you know what I mean? I try. I try. But anyway, um, you're welcome, man. Um, anyway, um, I guess persons, you know, want to know if you're contemplating a comeback in the political arena by any chance in the near future. <laughs> no, no, that's far from my mind, quite frankly, my brother. That's far from my mind. I, I, I can yeah, say okay, I can say you. no at this point in time, yes. Okay, okay, got you, got you. Uh, I'm, but I'm, you know, um, I'm just an advocate uh, for the truth. I'm I'm just an advocate <laughs> for the truthfulness. I, yeah, I, I mean I a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people a lot of people out there like that. My pleasure. Good. And you know, some persons might have some encouragement too, so keep that in mind. Yeah. And um, you know, um the clips, you know, you played some good clips as well. Thank you. And you know, forty years of independence and we're still in this position. Mm -hmm. You know, like you say, we're still yearning for some good leaders and we're yearning for some direction as far as I can tell, you know what I mean? And you know, I I I'm kinda like still relatively new to some of these shows and I'm I've been listening for a little while now, you know. Mm -hmm. I try to make my contribution somehow. And, um, you know, it's, to me, man, it's a lot of work need to be done in Sinkis and Nevis. A lot, a lot of work need to be done. And persons are not willing to do the work. You know what I mean? Persons are not willing to be honest. And, you know, we need some dignity for the people. We need dignity for the people. You know what I mean? Uh, we, need, we need some fresh ideas, man. We need some fresh people. You know, I'm very 
happy that your daughter was able to come down and make that presentation. That was a stinger as far as I can tell. You know, and I hope persons, you know, were paying attention, man. And I hope that's going, I hope what she said in that um, lecture series, it doesn't roll off the higher ups backs. You know what I mean? Because, you know, she made some great points, man. And some thoughts that I had, I know she summarized it pretty well for me. You know, we're small, but we should use our size to our advantage. True. And I know, and everybody knows, a lot of money has been flowing into the Federation, especially CBI. And my thing is right now, man, you know, that money, we should have put that money to use. But, you know, if we did, I think it's a need it should have been in a better better shape. You know, um, just look at the size of Manhattan, you know, and compare it to, you know, one of the islands. Oh, whatever. Compare it to Bastille and South Stamp put together. You know, and both islands is so small that I believe, man, when you look at the scale, you know, the amount of money that I'm in and the size of the islands, the population is down. You know, we don't have that much people. You know, we should have been better off, in my opinion, straight up. You know, mm, whether it be some, whether it be some physical accolades or some social programs or whatever. But right now, I'm seeing projects that's like faltering, you know, maybe maybe on both islands or whatever, whatever. But, you know, it's politics again, man, for some people. And think it's and Nevis, being that we've been put together like this, and, you know, some people were for secession, some people brought up in secession, me, myself, I was brought up in secession. I'm not afraid to say it. Mm-hmm. And a man is known by how he grew up and, he, he, you know, what he hear and all that type of stuff, his surroundings. But if we're going to be one country, man, we need to operate like one country. And whatever got to be done for the indifferences to get stamped out between the islands, it should be done, bro. This stuff should be done. I mean... If it needs this constitutional reform for this stuff to get done, you know, I don't see why. You know, we have such brilliant minds in the two, two islands. You know what I mean? A lot of people goes away and get these degrees and stuff. Like you said, persons in St. Kitts and Nevis got more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> you you, you want to tell me we can't put those brilliant minds together? You know what I mean? We need not wait for when there is hostile governments on both ends. We need to get this done when the governments are in cahoots and cooperation and communication with, with each other, when, when, when it's a friendly moment between the two islands, we need to get this stuff done. You know what I mean? And if we don't get that, if we don't get that constitutional reform between the both islands, these islands are going to be forever in disagreements. It's never going to change. It's not going to change. When, whenever the, whenever the, the, the intangibles are called out, when all of these intangibles is laid out in Parliament and put into law and, and we get some action done, man, you call me, man. Call me, and then I'll, I'll say kudos to the person that get, get it done. But going forward, yeah, we've gone past 40 years, and we're looking for some good 40 more years to come. But these things got to be done in order for symptoms to elevate. And the people, the mindset of the people got to be changed, man. Got to be changed. We need action more than talk. You know, I'm 54, and I'm not scared to say my age. I've been hearing certain things about Sintis and Nevis from since I was a little boy in Cotton Ground, and I'm still hearing it right now. You know what I mean? We need, we need, we need, we need strong leaders, and we don't need no corrupted leaders, man. See what's going on on the continent in Africa? The young people are now stepping up and 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 making a difference in their own countries, especially about their own natural resources. That CBI program is operating like it's our natural resource in Central and Africa. We don't have the natural resources like those countries over in the continent. And the money that they're pouring into that CBI program, we need the transparency with that, man. Because if we don't get the transparency, the leaders are going to be forever abusing that program. And while they abuse the program, the country can't get the proper advancement and development like what your daughter is asking and what what appeal your daughter has laid down in that, that speech she made. You know what I mean? And that's my little contribution for tonight, man. But so, we, we, we need we need we need to get good going, man. We need to get going. 
Song comes. And, you know, just, you guys have a good night, man. Thank you, my brother. And uh, song contribution as as usual. Uh, let's go back to the lines and thank this caller for holding. Caller, you are live. Hello, caller. Greetings. Greetings, my brother. How are you now, my brother, Patches? Uh, peaceful, my dear brother, Ras Aya. I've heard you for some time. Yeah, man, I was in the mountain and doing other things, so I just feel now warm relaxing here, listening here and going to smoke some nights nice over here. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, blessed night to your people in your social media feed, as I call Facebook and YouTube, as I say Facebook. And, and I would like to just indicate something I heard in the parliament sitting today, which was very disturbing. So I like you, who was in that jive, as the one representative for that area of East Bastia, where we now see those strong houses that was initially built by the Venezuela em- embassy giving contribution in that e- e- car, right? That was initiated, right? The uh, the, the, ho- the houses at, at Wellington Road, is you referring to? Yes, yes. I didn't hear the question though. I'm sorry about that. Well, I'm just saying, well, it was sponsored by the Venezuelan M- government. Which was part, it was part funded. Uh, it was grant funded, 50% was grant funded by the Venezuela government. Well, how come this minister could make statement like that, making it sound like there was nothing let out in that ground there? I'm not talking about the deputy prime minister, because he said he'd be listening to hear all the critics that people speak, what he's speaking on, on the grounds of these breaking initiative that he trying to make it sound like these or just something just appear. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear him. I didn't hear him quite frankly, you know. It's a, it's, it's a good thing me to listen now because I don't tell them I'm in a, in a college here but I smoke ganja every time. And these jokey people who call themselves leaders or educators who come find themselves by these old jokey thing called degree or uh, bachelors or uh, some dumb people I'm saying that without any fear favor. And we ain't hindering nothing behind nobody back. Because this is what I am speaking and this time now we realize this is not about some personal gain. This is about development to our people. You went in there over a year now. You see the issue that was aligning from so long. Why is it that you're going to come in this gesture to say, make it sound like it's something just apply now to create a development again? Remember that was something in the work. So I look at it as I'm applying that was not finished. That makes it sound like it's not, not no, nothing was there out there. Well, I hope that what this one he said he got into imply to help get people into a house development. As they call it, the smart, smart houses. They might find them things as a criminal gangster statement, you know, because what can be smart about this home? Interesting, interesting. Uh, I like to know. I, uh, that's why I said, you know, I just like to say now tonight, I see that the gangster of St. Kitsanevis is going to in, enhance itself to 40 years of independence under that same yoke of the colonial masters. Because to know I know we move them criminal there from the fields of St. Kitsanevis people who have suffered under them years of our ancestors and are still suffering under the years of the political gangsterism. But this time now, we really we, we, we act the wheel and change the magnitude of how we are being facing up to these people. Be, by deploying we serve as like we only could safeguard them, but not safeguard our own interests of our people. You make a quote talking about the motto. I would like to say that motto is need to burn in the fire, you know. Because I will never put a country over my human life, the development. Never put a country over my human development. My human development has to be in front in, in, and make the country rise together. Not put a country and say, but country about self, not me. So whoever make up the matter, tell them they better come and rephrase it in a different way. You see? Because our ancestors still taught us in the ancient, know thyself. So how can we remove this mind from that message of ancestors and go to something of a European thinking mindset? A lot of European thinking mindset is in the leaders on here, you know, from Gratia, then you had Southwell who, who only spent a couple months before he get he had attacked by the, the Masons them. Then you had Limo take a little couple months here. 
Then you had Sim more get a premiership. I mean, Sim has got a premiership. Then you had Sim come into 1982 to establish himself as the leader. The Prime Minister of Sink is a new with 1983. Now they said they raise a flag indicating the change of baton. But they didn't say the change of the Masons because the Masons still control the power group of economics only in Sink and new and in the wider part of the world. So I'm giving a, a own mouth to your people who talk and you, these programs you're having because you all need to level these political garbage that I are feeding people to and educate the people about the mess that the Masons have been on here with. That's why you mind you see that all our leaders who are political leaders by Prime Minister Stewardship, they are members of the Masons and I said so without any fear or favor. And if they are not personally members, they have somebody in the cabinet is a tie to the masonry without any studies that the people can understand who we're facing up. We are challenging by these demons and it's time now we open up your eyes against the demons them. If we want to change the magnitude of our country going forward and our nation going against all these evil actions that are taking up against our poor brothers and sisters in St. Chris and Nevis. So Brother Patches, may and I go safe with the love of the Almighty and I remember the Almighty is mighty than mankind, you know. So man can can remove I and I, can we put our love and faith in him, not in mankind. So give thanks. Bless you. Is it okay to wish you a happy independence, my brother? No, man, I don't wish me a happy independence. I need to lock up that cookie <laughs> thing of, of England first and take all the cookies, sail, and he pumped down here and sink it and the car deal shows. Okay. I mean, I said this because I want to I have I, facts I, by saying I withdraw, I withdraw, I withdraw, my brother, I withdraw. I have withdraw. a lovely night, too. Have Blessed a, keep have you. A, have a lovely night as well. And and I hope that you have a joyful time with your, your, your daughters, the man here. Right, <laughs> That's my brother. Thanks, That's my brother. That's my, my brother. Man who is never out of words and not afraid to talk truth to power. Ras Aya. Uh, good evening, Patches. Read this email. The Prime Minister and Minister of Social Security continues to breach standard protocols when it comes to social security financial information. The social security legislation lays out the protocol for passing information to the minister. This is done by annual accounts and periodic actuarial reports which the minister is mandated to present to the National Assembly. Dr. Drew's statement to the Assembly earlier suggests that he may have asked the Director directly for information from the management accounts that the Board receives regularly. It appears that he then takes selective and deceptive information and relays it verbally to the Assembly and in the process misinforms the Assembly and the nation. What rubbish was he peddling that Social Security was in the red and now is in the black. He didn't say green. He made no mention that the information he spoke about was from unaudited accounts and his information was tainted by his false interpretation of the very information. He's, he clearly does not understand what he's talking about. It is clear that he simply does not know a scintilla about the governance protocols as they relate to social security, reads that email. And that's why it's so troubling, you know, and disheartening to listen to uh, to Dr. Drew, because the things he say and the things he do. Uh, good evening, Mr. Lyburn. Blessings. Happy 40th anniversary of independence to you and your family. Same to you as well. Thanks again for another riveting program tonight. I think the government of St. Kitts is making mock sport at us. There's nothing wrong in supporting the party, but give Jack his jacket. Your daughter, Miss Southwell, made some poignant points. Seems as though they were mainly Labour supporters because when this, she spoke about the infrastructure where Port Zante was concerned, silence. After 40 years, there's still a lot of hatred, disrespect for former Prime Ministers. When will it end? Only God could change that. Please continue to speak the truth. Uh, reads that email. Let's go back to the lines at just about 10 o'clock. We take this call. Call you live. Hello, caller. Are you there, caller? Good evening, Mr. Lyburn. Happy independence to you. 
I was just the other day, I was asking someone about the Rasta guy. Which Rasta guy? You have you? You have your equipment. I just love to hear him talk because he always talks the truth. Okay. Let me rest. Are you? Yeah, you, you're listening to your equipment. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. She, I'm, I'm sorry about the quality of the call, but I was asking if she's talking about rest, the rest of the guy. Rest, are you? Well, like I said, he's uh, always uh, unafraid uh, to speak truth to power and. He is a no-nonsense man. Anonymous question. Good evening, Patches. Read this email. Happy 40th to you. I've been following the recent policy moves from the Jew administration, and I've got a few questions I'd love to hear your take on. They just announced a housing initiative and an energy, an energy program almost at the same time. It makes me wonder, is this a shiny object to appease the masses with a populist measure as a distraction to the shade, the Trinidad housing project? Uh, Is this timing just a coincidence or intentional? Also, I hear they have recently forgiven a very substantial loan uh, for the Christoph Harbour uh, project, and I can't help but ask, who is getting from this financial break? Who's gaining back, back a part from this financial break? Has there been any reasonable explanation or rational offer? Once, one more thing. There's been noticeable silence on the funds generated from the CBI revenue issued for the Correctional Facilities Project. Could today's announcement be a way to distract from some other things going on? While energy and housing fees relief seem... While energy and housing fees... Relief seems like it will really help people out, those in need. Help people out, those in need. I don't know. Thoughts? Read this email. I wonder if these are, are rhetorical questions, but caller, you're live. Uh, it's 9.10.04. Caller, you're live. Mr. Ian Patch is live, but greetings to you, brother. How are you? I am peaceful, my brother. Yourself? Happy independence to you. Blessed independence to you as well, my brother. Thank you, thank you, my brother. And pray you continue to stay strong. Thank you. With your unusual topics. That does that be very, very interested to listen to. I listen to the program all the time. All the time. Thank you. When I miss the program is when you ain't on the radio. Thanks. And you're always on the radio. Thanks a lot, my so, brother. So, I always listen. You ask a question, 40th anniversary for independence. Where do we go from here? Uh-huh. Um, a question I as a citizen wouldn't be say well thinking that we would have still asking ourselves a question like that. Because we say we are an educated society. And if we say we are young democracy, we have to ask ourselves if we have a democracy if we want a, a rotating democracy, and we want an evolving democracy, because that's what democracy does, evolves. Mm-hmm. Mr. Patches, in this day and age, we cannot say, from since independence, we haven't seen a way forward, because we pray to God, and He gave us answers. He shows us the way. But many of us, Mr. Patches, don't want to change our ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say the pandemic would have changed a lot of us ways. But many of us still want to entangle in the same mindset. Why would we think so? Look at 2015. People said, the people said they wanted to change. The people still wanted to change. People say unity. The politicians wouldn't say unity. But here is it. The argument is the former Prime Minister's default. Even though the 2020 election, no mention of no fault was going on in the unity administration. Mm -hmm. No mention of anything. We went into the election 
And just after the 2020 election, here is it. You're hearing complaints. Deceitfulness on the people, Mr. Patches. True, true. So we get, and we get the, the, the large source. Where do we go from here? But mankind don't want to show the strength of unity. Unity. This is the first time the country has ever seen a difference by people working in unity. And because of the egos that's in us, we put it above our consciousness and forget the way of the Lord. Because that's what the Lord says. We must do things in righteousness, Mr. Patches. And it, the Bible says, if you can love the man don't know. who you can't see, mm -hmm. who, who, if you can love the man, if you can't love the man who you can see, see, how can you love the man who you can't see? Mm -hmm. And we say, and we know, and we read the word, that say God is the spirit. So you can't see God. So then, how you could say that you love him when you, the man who near you, you ain't love. So if we say that we walk in steps of Christ, we must be doing righteous works. If we say we are a Christian nation, sure. we can say we are a nation of just image, outside appearances. The whole society go into buildings every Sunday to church. Hmm. So why in our secular world of our society, we can see no difference? No ways of thinking, Mr. Patches. It's our fault. And the thing is, you know, is the educated guys is the one who won in the system. The educated ones. <laughs> Look at CCM and Pam. They were the strongest among the unity administration, and they would have collapsed the government. They didn't even tell the people ever. In mind, they ain't get the message of the people either, you know, because the people said 2015 work in unity. So they could have show the country, okay, it's Timothy Fault. So me and the man go work in unity with the same message. But they didn't show that. They want power. They show that. We got toxins as it is, as it was. They ain't putting up on nobody. They follow their own government. Because true? they had the they had the strength of the government. So I don't understand until to this day. I never support Timothy, but I never see the evidence that they bring to the country to say Timothy was the fault. Never until today. This ain't no support for Timothy. This is the evidence in the country. Look how Mark wants to talk about the government that he was involved in. Is the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. So I don't know what rubbish and stuff. Where do we go from here? We strive for unity. We put the trust in God and we do what is right. Consistently. Not today and not tomorrow. Consistently. Because every leader always has to remember God is the boss. It's a pity. Mr. Patches, on our 40th anniversary, we still have to be searching for ourselves. Where do we go from here? When we already see where we can go from here. It's under a unity administration. I hear fiscal pooling mentioned ever. You know, we don't like to get jacket jacket. The interview you had the other night with some time ago on your program with the former prime minister. I emailed her, asked a question pertaining three ministers, former three ministers, government in this country. And the questions were very important because when I heard the questions, I told them, I want to more because I wanted to hear the answers. But the the reply from the former prime minister was so mature in his reply. Not that he failed to answer the questions, but because he see the sensitiveness of the discussion pertaining to what's going on in his country, he kept to the point. And I admire that. 
That's what we need in the country. Maturity reasoning. Maturity, yeah. You see, how about now? Look at our deadlock election. I mean, we are living national hero and statesman. Someone who I respect all the time. Before he opened his mouth to say anything, that's a living national hero. I said, oh, I, I want to hear what he's going to say because he's not no a politician. He's a statesman. He's a, he's a hero. And when I hear some of the words that come out of his mouth, I said, my heavens, why, why, why? We cannot be party political. And politics is killing us, you know, it's party politics. Because politics is what governs the world. But it's party politics. We see, we see so much apart party over the country. When it shouldn't be. It's a party you continue to be strong on the 40th anniversary of our independence. I pray the country more success. God, God grace. Thank it's you. a party is stay healthy. Thank you, my brother. I wish you the same as well. Uh, and I'm going to take this and make this my final call for tonight. A call I want to thank you for holding. Uh, you're alive. Hello, caller. Thank you. Thank you again, Patches. Um, would you agree from birth to um, living moving forward, our life expectancy is approximately 60 at a good mature age moving forward, apart from the act of God or some illness take place in between. Our real life expectancy is about 60. I mean, some may disagree with the numbers, but I will say 60. At the present moment, I just make 57, August 10th. But the point I'm trying to make, with all those rhetoric, deviastic comments about our own brothers in God who we love and trust and our dignity, why would a person close to that age of expectancy, which is death, which no man can escape, would live a legacy in rhetoric, deviastic, which is devilish, and all the instant mockery comment about one another. Where do we go from here? Peace and tranquility. And you align humble and peaceful. Okay? I am preaching the good that should come out of man than deviastic behavior. And... I will say to the Prime Minister, and a question I would like to ask, I would like to know when he will be in New York, because I am in New York right now, and I wish I could give him some advice from a wild card, because I'm a wild card, to those who are in his entourage. I need you to shuffle your entourage, because that is destroying you. I need you to furnish good on the people of St. Kitts and Nevis so that, as I said, government is continuous. Let the other person who take over from your time due to election, not selection, carry your legacy on because government is continuous. But with the claim that has been made about you, of lies and lies and lies. Um, you got to look into yourself, look around you, because your greatest threat is from within, not from the people, not from those who are accusing you. It's in your circle, and just like Ras I said, whether it's looting artists or masons, you got to do some clean up and shuffling. Look into your circle. And you will find the answer with all the respect. But that is question. 
do you have a schedule? Do you know the schedule of when the Prime Minister will be in the New York area? Like, um, I heard this lady comment about tickets and tickets sold out. Uh, it is free because I will need to find where that session is because I just need to know. I am a concerned person in the, from the Federation and I need to know. You, you know, I have issues. You know, my brother, I, I, it's, uh, it, it's a shame, right? I haven't really followed uh, the <laughs> United Nations. Uh, a calendar, I think the high level week uh, should have already started. I stand to be corrected, but uh, I, I, he, he normally would go uh, for the high level week at the United Nations. I don't know if he's going, and perhaps I would, I would, I, I wouldn't be able to, to uh, say to you uh, at, at the time. But uh, I, I could, I, I could probably find it before. You uh, get off the line, but it's something I did not really concern myself with. I, I, I can't tell you why. You know, I just just the high level week uh, uh, in New York is on the eighteenth, nineteenth to review the implementation. But it starts, I think, the eighteenth, which is today, right? I don't know exactly when the prime minister will be there. Uh, but the the general assembly high level weeks are start to the general debate is between the nineteenth to the twenty third and twenty sixth of september so i I'm, i suspect that he'll be in in uh in in New York around that time but it depends on when he's scheduled to speak anyway but i won't have that information but, but that that would be at the u s united nations yes so yes so yeah, uh, you know, well, most, leader, most leaders, uh, or the world leaders, will be there uh, to mm -hmm. to present to to the UN. You know, so uh, he should be around sometime that time. I don't know when he's speaking. No doubt you, you can hear that. But the general debate uh, begins tomorrow, the nineteenth, and continues to to Saturday, the twenty third. Mm -hmm and ends on the 26th of September, which is next week, Tuesday. Uh, so I, I suspect he'll be there uh, between the 19th or, and, and the 23rd. Uh, again, that's, that depends on when he's speaking. Uh, but so I, can I, guess the best place, I guess the best place I could check is at the mission then. Uh, certainly, certainly you should be able to know. Yeah. All right. Yes, I'll look into that tomorrow. But anyway, yes, I, rate, I rate your... Um, 99% tonight with the topic and the issues, the contribution. Uh, I never give 100%. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I am humble. I'm humble, my but, brother. I'm humble. You, you, <laughs> you, 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 you are very liberal with your marking, man. You, you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but thanks yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. The best always yet to come. Okay, my brother. Thanks a lot for your input. And Thank have you yourself a happy me. independence when it comes around tomorrow. Well, I'm, I'm not the to I'm yes, in New York. Yes, so yes, you all well, enjoyed. Yes. Well, thanks my, yes, thanks a lot for your input. That's the way we're going to end it tonight, my street dog family. Just to to uh, answer a few questions, uh, someone asks about the smart houses. And I I remember when the Ambassador Leonato went on radio when these houses were announced. This is how he, he, he described. Uh, this was his definition, rather, of the smart houses that will be are being built. You're, you're speaking about smart homes, too. What would make these homes smart? Well, smart how we deliver smart when it comes to home mm -hmm. is we have to consider uh, climate resilience. Mm -hmm. These houses are built so that they can, excuse me, withstand earthquakes, typhoons, hurricanes, hurricanes um, and of the like. Tsunamis? And of the like, yes. <laughs> I mean... How how we can what 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 how we can force the bill to take? Up to category ten. Ten way. You will have ten anyway, please. Well, I'm just saying. Well, you see, uh, interesting enough as well, when he spoke about smart hospitals, this was the Prime Minister. Just a few days ago he said this. Our commitment to healthcare remains firm. 
Just two days ago, I visited the proposed site for a modern, state-of-the-art, climate-smart general hospital that will revolutionize healthcare delivery in our federation. Through cooperation between the governments of St. Kitts and Nevis and the Republic of China, Taiwan, this vision will become a reality. When we think about smart uh, hospitals and smart homes, we think from a, a, a perspective of technology. Uh, these guys seem to think from a perspective of the climate. And, but you know, my sweet dog family, uh, someone asked a question about Jeffrey Hanley. But like I said, you know, it's, it's sometimes uh, difficult uh, to really listen to, to these guys, but uh, we know Jeffrey is confessed that he's a slow student. Yes, he got a PhD, he claims, uh, and graduates from a school uh, or a university that he never attended. But that's the man who has degrees like a thermometer. And what a miraculous transformation, we would say. Color, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a few seconds. Can you use it? Yes. Yes, Patrick, what is it? Good evening to you. How are you? I'll give you... <laughs> How are you? How are you? Because, because fine, independence, and I haven't heard you for such a long time, I will listen to you. Well, you know, I don't tell you sometimes why you, just, you ain't here, you know, sometimes I, I just can't get too difficult. You can't get in? That's, that's a difficult, that's, that's strange, though, but nice to hear nonetheless. Happy independence when yeah. it comes. When you came to you, when you come out, what's that? But you're trying to find out. We are that boy, dear. Those money to go pay a thousand dollars for the social security because remember when he went to this any country in the red. So I would really like to know if he's the passport them or he sell it. And I hope when the um the media was going go out and what not the journalists then go out and what that they ask him the question and let him answer to say how much passport. We don't tell that we know if it's the passport money, he's giving out to social security. And watch that. You just can't trust that man. Any time we open him out, he sleep, lie, he talk, lie, he eat, lie, everything, lie. We just can't depend on that man here. Let them ask him how much passport, because this passport here, it seems like he's going to be a trouble in this country to get his passport. When we do not to sleep and watch that people won't come and bang you tell you get up, this is mine. So please, are uh, you find out from him? Maybe ask him hard question and let him answer how much passport and he don't sell by now. And stop playing me in this country here. Let me stop playing us. Eh? He, he never answers questions, nonetheless. That's the unfortunate thing. Well, then we, yeah. then we need to make him uh, let them answer the question. Yeah, because when they go around the rest, they just answer the question. So let me answer the question. If he ain't going to answer the question, he don't make no sense for them to go there, go ask him nothing. If he ain't going to answer, they just keep out of India. If he ain't going to answer the question. 
Okay, my dear, good to hear you. Have yourself a wonderful holiday. Even though you do. You too. Yes, thanks, you too. A lot. Bye. thanks a lot. That's the way we're going to end the call tonight and perhaps move on with the program by Street Dog Family. But as we conclude, I'm sure we will all agree that real problems will not be solved by government. Changes begin, or change rather begins, as a grassroots movement. Hear this, real problems will not be solved by government. Rather, change begins as a grassroots movement, comes from the people. And the world is changing faster than ever. And if we continue to squabble amongst ourselves, we'll get nowhere. But all the problems we are facing today, we must place them square at the feet of Dr. Terence Michael Jew, who is incompetent, does not know what he's doing. He's acting like a fascist, like a centralized autocrat, who, according to him, today introduced an independence reset. He speaks on electricity and water. Reconnection, that's good news. But is the debt of these delinquent customers going to be forgiven? He spoke on all the subjects as if he didn't have a minister. He is committed, he said, not to walk in the shadow of Denzel Douglas. He declared that he cannot sit with Timothy Harris. But Dr. Jew needs help. The country needs help. And even his foot soldiers have publicly confessed that the performance of this administration is horrible. My words. She said this. We were told on the platform that investors were knocking on the door, you know, before they got into office. They were given the opportunity to go into office. We are the investors now. Not even one. All I'm simply saying is that you make all these trips abroad and you come back to the country. And you're not even saying, well, you know, I'm talking to Mr. So-and-so. I'm talking to that so-and-so. Nothing at all. And we're supposed to just listen to words like sustainable development and framework and... You know, I mean, all those sound bites, I call them petty truths to make us feel good. And we try and take those to the supermarket. And every week, you know, you have different people coming on. I call them the spin doctors, telling you the same thing over and over. And when you talk this way, people who are not at the out there suffering, getting upset with you because of their support. And I support the party, you know, but I don't support what is going on right now. I'm making that abundantly clear. I support labor as a party. That will not change. And I can defensively say that. But when it comes to what I see going on right now with the presence of the ministers and how they're operating, it's not satisfactory and it's not about looking favors from anybody. I want none, absolutely. That is why I stand by my word. And this is the reset that the country needs after 40 years of independence. How many of us have the courage to do and say what that lady just said and did. But certainly, she has put her country above herself. Do we have the courage to put aside our differences for a greater cause, to put country above self? The future of our federation depends upon it. How will you put country before self? You told me, some stories that would inspire the Federation. But I believe that after 40 years of independence, it is time to put country above self. Happy independence, my straight dog family, when it comes tomorrow. That's my story tonight, and I'm not going to change it. But I will thank Almighty God for guiding our conversation tonight, and as always, I gave you an extra for independence to see. I want to thank you, the callers, you, the many listeners, you, the emailers. Remember, 
You are the ones who make straight talk, and for that reason, I say a big, big thank you. I am Ian Patsy Leibold, and God Spear, we will connect on Thursday for another edition of Straight Talk. Until we connect then, again, have yourselves a happy independence. If you don't want to participate, just take your rest. Be with yourself and your God. And remember that whatever your mind conceives, that you will achieve. But first of all, you've got to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank Him for taking you through the night. And my straight dog family, keep moving on. Bye-bye. Until we connect on Thursday. When I wake in the morning, I thank God for the morning light. Give him thanks and praises for taking me safely through the night. The rest of food and loving care, and for my mother's breath of life that's got me here. So, whatever my mind can see that I will achieve, you better believe because I do the things I should be to my brethren. Till I reach the top somehow